Hello, brothers and sisters. I'm so glad that you joined me for the Lord's Word of God today. And I'm just Joe, no title. And today the subject matter is pride. And so we're going to look at a couple passages in the old text about pride. So if you brought your Bibles today, please turn with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter 14. And we'll start reading in verse 12. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning! How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations! For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation, on the farthest side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet you shall be brought down to hell, to the lowest depths of the pit. So brothers and sisters, this is Satan, the devil himself, called here Lucifer. And he's an angel, but he is thrown down to the earth. And at some point, God is going to cast him into hell fire, burning for eternity, never having rest day and night. Amen? Amen. But we look here at why did he fall from heaven? What was his problem? His problem was pride. You see, it says here that he said in his heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. And then he goes on to say, I will be like the Most High. That's God Almighty. He's saying he's going to be like God, equal to God. Well, brothers and sisters, that's not happening, right? And so that's why he got cast out. And eventually he will be cast into hell fire, burning for eternity, never having rest day and night. Amen? Amen. So, brothers and sisters, God hates pride. He tells us that in a couple passages in Proverbs. And in Proverbs 16, 5, he says, Everyone proud in heart is an abomination of the Lord. None will go unpunished. So now, brothers and sisters, I'm going to show you a great example of that. Please turn with me to the book of Numbers, chapter 20. And to set the stage, God has delivered the Israelites out of bondage from Egypt. And Moses is leading them in the desert. At some point, they're out of water, and God instructs Moses to take his rod and hit a rock, and he gives them water. Later on in their journey, the same thing happens. They run out of water. They have short memories. And they are angry with Moses and Aaron. And so, we'll pick it up at verse 6. So Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly to the door of the tabernacle of meeting. And they fell on their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the rod, you and your brother Aaron gather the congregation together. Speak to the rock before their eyes, and it will yield its water. Verse 10. And Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock. And he said to them, Hear now, you rebels, must we bring water for you out of this rock? Then Moses lifted his hand and struck the rock twice with his rod. And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation and their animals drank. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, because you did not believe me, to hollow me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. So God Almighty is mad at Moses. The Lord wanted to give them water and told Moses, just speak the words. Because God Almighty wanted the glory. But Moses took the glory. And Moses said, must we make water out of this rock and struck it twice. But that's not what God told him to do, right? Now we 
know from the word of God that Moses is one of the most meek persons on the planet. That's why God chose him. And we know that there were 10 miracles that God performed to get them out of Egypt. Major miracles. But what has happened here is Moses gets puffed up with pride. And God punishes him for 40 years. He is out in the middle of the desert wandering and he gets to see the promised land from a mountain but is told he cannot go and, and enjoy that land with the fellow Israelites. You see, what does that teach us? It teaches us two things. One, don't get sucked up into pride. Do not let the devil in because the devil is full of pride. We learned that. And Jesus is full of humility, came as a humble servant to show us how to live. Amen? Amen. And God hates the proud, but he loves the humble. And we're going to read about that. But what we also learn is, never think you're so good, so close to God, that you can do what you want to do. No, brothers and sisters, we can't. We must do what God wants us to do the way God wants us to do it. Amen? Amen. And we look to the New Testament. The whole New Testament is the gospel. And the first four books is the gospel of Jesus. And that whole New Testament teaches us how to live. Amen? Amen. So let's turn to that right now. Turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 18. And to lay this stage, the disciples have asked Jesus, who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And we'll start reading in verse 2. Then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them, and said, Assuredly I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So brothers and sisters, our Lord and Savior Jesus has made it crystal clear. You must be humble to even make it to the kingdom of heaven. If you're not, you won't make it. And many people will find themselves during their lifetime, as Moses did, getting puffed up with pride. He has blessed many people with athletics, with singing ability, with acting ability, with all kinds of ability and looks. But remember, that's what happened to the devil. He was blessed with all kinds of wonderful things. Don't let it happen to you. And if it has, ask God for help to humble you. Because if you don't humble yourself, God will put a stumbling block in front of you to humble you. You understand? He only chastens the ones he loves. Amen? Amen. In Philippians 2, 3, it reads, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than himself. Brothers and sisters, always talk to anyone you meet throughout the day as if they are above you and you are lower than them. No matter who they are and what position they have in life. Amen? Amen. So now turn with me to the book of Proverbs chapter 12. And we'll read verse 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. But he who heeds counsel is wise. Do you understand? You see, a proud person, you can't teach him anything. He's not going to listen because he or she thinks they know everything. But the Word of God knows everything. And if we read the Word of God, which is the only way we know how to please God and do His will, and then once we understand it, we need to act on it and seek God's grace 
by pleasing God and doing His will. Amen? Amen. Many people want to please God and not repent. You have to repent to please God. Amen? Amen. So let's turn to the last passage, which is in the book of Revelation, chapter 14. And we'll start reading verse 6. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and peoples, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come. So you see, brothers and sisters, God wants glory. He wants all the glory. People that have the spirit of the world do not give God glory. We must acknowledge God in everything and give Him all the glory and take credit for none. Amen? Amen. There is no tomorrow for someone who has pride. Pride kills. It's as simple as that.